Welcome. Welcome to another video on the abdominal specimens for spotting. Last time we covered the liver. Today we will focus on the stomach. <clears throat> the stomach, as you can see in front of you, is quite a muscular bag of tissue and uh, it has a very distinct shape. Uh, anatomically, the in situ position of the stomach is located on the almost left side but slightly towards the center as well in the epigastric region. What you are seeing right now is the anterior surface but it's more appropriate that we start from the top. This tube you see on the top right here is the esophagus, the lower end of the esophagus. As we eat the food passes through the esophagus right through here and enters the cardiac portion of the stomach. This portion is the cardia. And from the cardia, you can see this rounded part right over here. This is the fundus of the stomach, the largest part. All the food which enters here is stored here. And then obviously, it will undergo the digestion. From the fundus, on top, there is a small curvature known as the lesser curvature. While on the other side, we have a greater curvature. And you may appreciate that there is something suspended from this greater curvature. We'll get to this in a moment. Let's start with the lesser curvature. On the lesser curvature, there are a number of features to show you here. First and foremost are these basically peritoneal attachments. This, what you see here, is the lesser momentum. There's basically a connection between the stomach and the liver on top. If I were to hold the liver and the stomach in its proper position, this is how it would appear like inside our abdomen. And there is actually a connection, a ligament known as the uh, hepatoduodenal ligament from the liver to the stomach, which forms part of the lesser omentum. This lesser omentum attaches right here nicely. And that forms a connection between the two, a ligamentous connection. Only the vessels are passing through it. But can we appreciate any vessels here? You'll have to see here from the back side, there is an opening for the left gastric artery and left gastric vein. Right over here, I'm passing a needle through those vessels. These supply the lesser curvature of the stomach. And keep in mind they're coming from the abdominal aorta, the celiac trunk. So on, that, on top side we have these vessels. Coming to the greater curvature, as I said, there is something which is suspended from the greater curvature. Just like we had the lesser momentum on top, down below we have the greater momentum. And this is a really a thick apron-like sheet which extends all the way down, even covers the uh, uh, large intestines. This is considered the policeman of the abdomen like in some books because it protects all the viscera from external injury or spread of infections or fluid even. So it's quite larger than this. This is only a small cut section you see here, but the greater momentum really extends all the way downwards. So on this greater curvature, uh, there is uh, no notable vessel here, but if there was one, it would be known as the gastroepiploic vessel. From this point onwards, we finally come here. This sharp cut, this turn over here, is known as the angular incisura. From this point onwards, all of this is the pylorus. The pylorus is quite muscular. And after the food is digested here, it comes to this point, before finally coming to the pylorus part. Keep in mind, the dilated part is known as the antrum. This is the antral part, and this is the pyloric tube, and it's covered inside with the muscle known as pyloric sphincter. This is normally closed during dis dissection. Once the food has become kind, it then opens up, and this then passes on to the intestines. If you see this in front of you, this is how the stomach connects with the small intestine, and then all the food then goes into the small intestine and the large intestine. You can even see the pancreas sandwiched nicely between the first, second and third part of the intestines. And one thing you may have noticed is why is this stomach more smaller and more muscular while this one is larger and flatter. This is mostly due to the specimen preparation. Normally the stomach is like this. When it fills with food, it enlarges. Uh, by this time this specimen was made, the musculature had already atrophied. So we have this basically flat, large, deflated type of stomach. But this is how it normally looks like earlier on in the body. So 
We have done the esophagus, the cardia portion, the funda. We have done the lesser curvature, the greater curvature. This is the main body. Here we have the pyloric antrum and the pylorus. And we have shown you the greater omentum and the lesser omentum. Let's move on to the small intestines here. I can just put this one to the side. So then we can now focus on this specimen right here. And I'm not going to hold it upwards because it's perfectly how it is in the body appearance. You can see once again, we have the esophagus right here, the cardiac portion. You can see the lesser omentum attached to the lesser curvature. The greater curvature and the greater omentum over there, pyloric antrum, the pylorus, and finally we come to the duodenum. The duodenum is composed of four parts, the first, the descending second part, the third part right here, and the fourth one going down into the duodenum and ileum. What's interesting here is the presence of the pancreas. Look how it is nicely sandwiched between the duodenum and right above we have the stomach. The pancreas, anatomically, it has a tail portion right at the end. And you can see a very, very nice splenic artery. Keep in mind, all the splenic artery does indeed give branches to supply the pancreas. The splenic artery ultimately will go all the way to the left side to supply the spleen. Here you can nicely see stomach, intestines, pancreas, and spleen in the proper position. And just to complete the whole thing, I can put this sliver right at this portion. Here all the visceras are in their in-situ position, as they are in the abdomen. And again, sizes vary. Sometimes these other structures, they're larger or smaller. We'll get to those when we do them. But normally this is how you would see the pancreas as well. Aside from the uh, splenic artery, and let me just, for your visual purposes, I just add a little passage to this, so you can see that artery, right over there, very nice artery. In fact, there's also the vein on the back side, but let's ignore that. Here is the splenic artery. We have the tail portion, we have the head portion, this is the neck, and the neck is the part where we have the passage of the superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric, uh, so superior mesenteric artery and the uh, vein as well. You can't really see it from the front side. However, if I were to turn this around just temporarily, you can see a few openings here. Very nice openings. These are the same openings of those vessels. Here, I will pass a red one through the artery and a blue one through the vein. And you can see right over here. Here we have this dilated opening. This one is the superior mesenteric artery. And right beside this, although you can't see it here, from that end, here. The opening is a bit occluded, but it is right adjacent to it. Artery and the vein. Superior mesenteric artery, superior mesenteric vein. And those of you who are sharp enough, you can see right over here, we have the passage of the portal triad, the hepatic artery, the cystic duct, and the portal vein. The three same things I showed you near the porta hepatis. So, just for your mother. Uh, completion sake, let's also pass the needles through here. Let's pass a red one through the artery. And remember, the artery is always the smallest one. Go we'll over here. Here I pass it through the hepatic artery. Right beside that, the one which is more collapsed, that one will always be the vein. Here we are passing it through the vein. And the one which is slightly ajar, that one is your, the common bile duct. The common bile duct ultimately pass through the pancreas, enter into the second part of the duodenum. And here the bile is being passed out. This can get blocked and obviously that can cause the accumulation of the bile fluids. And sometimes that can even affect the pancreas. It turns out one of the biggest causes of pancreatitis is actually gallstones because they are blocking this part and the bile fluid then damages the pancreas. Now I'm just going to remove them and come to the front side once again. And here we see our restructuring in its proper position again. There's not much else to show here. We've shown you the head, the neck. The unsaid process is a bit thick part lying underneath on the back side. You can't see it that very well here. But it lies just below the vessels and the body and the tail and the splenic vessels, the small intestines and the stomach. This one will be will do for the stomach and its related structures. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, we'll be covering the remaining abdominal viscera. I love this.